Good morning, I'm Lynn and welcome to another exciting day at Utopia Farms. So I had some more tests I had to go to this morning, so I'm doing all my chores in the afternoon. And the first one out to greet me here was, uh, was Casanova here. Casanova and my little triplet. Oh, hi buddies. So we're going to uh, go in here and quickly check on how that ram with the snotty nose made out last night. Um, excuse me, Casanova, let's, let's let us in here, okay? Come on, I know you rule the roost, but you do have to let me in. Okay, this time I know I'm looking for Mark. Oh, and there he is, Mark on his back. Hi, buddy. Well, his nose looks a lot better today. Um, he was on long-acting medication, so he's due for another shot tomorrow. But uh, come here, let's see your face. Let's see your face, buddy. Come on, come on. Hi, how are you guys? How are you guys doing? Oh. Come on, lift your head up. Come on. One thing about the heat, they don't like the flies and a sure sign is they've all got their heads down. It's like they're freaked out and their heads are right down. But there he is. His nose is quite a lot clearer today. Um, he's been eating, um, acting fine. That doesn't mean we're gonna stop the antibiotics. He's on a course now, so I guess we don't want them to become dependent, um, I mean resistant to antibiotics either. So we'll give it to him probably two more times for sure and see how he does. But if you get it quickly, they usually respond really quickly too. And, uh, I think he's going to be just fine. And apparently there's no one else in here with uh, dirty noses. So hopefully he is the one and only. But like I said, at this time of year with flies around, any, any type of illness spreads quickly. So chores are all done for the morning. And I've just come down the road a little bit to our neighbor's uh, farm. Okay, over there you can see our farm. That's our farm uh, in the distance. So um, the bean field that you can see right past this hay is our bean field and that's our property. But where the hay starts here, this is the neighbor's property. So we rent this property from them. Now they just sold it. So I don't know if the new owners are going to want us here or not. But uh, we'll be having that discussion with them when they move in. But in the meantime, this is Arnie's very last fields of first cut that he's got to cut down. And then we'll finally be finished first cut. Um, this has been the longest I've ever seen first cut taking. But the weather has just been so unstable. So it'll be nice to get the first cut off. And the reason uh, you want this first cut off by now, because it's mid-July, um, this hay is losing all its nutritional value because it's getting old. And not only that, when you're cutting it down late like this, there's not as much opportunity for regrowth and second cut or even third cut. So. Um, the quicker you get the hay off, the quicker you get regrowth and second and third cut, which are uh, what everybody wants the most. It's, it's the most nutritious, tender of the hays. So Arnie will be very, very happy when this haying is done, this first cut haying. I believe his mower is a 13 foot cut. 
So when he mows, it, it does come down pretty quickly. And we've got a good window here now of good weather, so should be no problem getting this bailed up. But Arnie told me to go look at their pond. They've got a pond here, and apparently there's ducks there. So I'm going to go have a look. Here's the pond, and I could hear a bullfrog, but I'm not seeing any ducks. He said there are a whole bunch of ducks and babies in here. Well, unfortunately, I couldn't find any ducks here, so I hear lots of frogs jumping in when I walk around. But I guess I'll head back here this evening and see if we can get any ducks. Here's a funny one I saw though. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. But there's a big bullfrog and he's floating with all his legs splayed in the middle of the pond. He's going to finish up this field this morning and then this afternoon there's a ditch back there and he's going to go uh, do that back field at the very back and that will be all the cutting of first cut for this year. Woohoo! Another thing I forgot to mention this morning uh, in our live trap we caught the mother raccoon and her two babies and we brought them down to the down the road uh, there's a kind of like a swampy forest down there and we released them there where there's plenty of water trees and shelter so they're no longer living at our place so I'm back to check on how Arnie's doing with the hay we went home for lunch and it was a clear day and the forecast was for sun for the next few days, so I figured we'd finally enter, finish off with the first cut. And look at the sky. And this is why we are still doing first cut into the middle of July, because we are being hit every day by rain. And uh, we've told you before that rain is definitely <laughs> not part of haying. So, I guess um, I'll sum up our haying season since this will be the first cutting day. Sorry, last cutting day of first cut. So when we started off the haying season, we were wrapping all our hay and you watched us wrap all that. Um, and the reason we had to wrap it is because at that point in time, the first cut hay was still very lush and green and full of moisture. So much moisture that with the cool weather we had had and the weather that looked like this, um, it was impossible to make dry hay. So in order to get the hay off and um, have good quality hay, we it was required to wrap that hay. And then as the season went on, now hay season shouldn't take as long as this, but as it went on, we started to be able to make dry hay. And in order to make good dry hay, you need uh, heat and sunshine. And at least probably three to four days is ideal if you want it to be dry. So uh, when it's dry, your the heads are gonna be forming and by heads, I mean things like this where they have the little uh, tufts at the end, those are the seeds. Uh, it's heading out, uh, starting to head out. You don't want it overly headed out because then it's going to get too dry. But when it starts, 
uh, then uh, and, and you've got the corresponding weather to go with it you can usually cut the hay and let it sit in the fields for a few days and then bale it up and when you probe it you won't have any moisture content enough to cause you grief in the future by molding so uh, that's how you want it ideally and usually uh, you're able to get your first cut hay in uh, before July but when your weather's like this and I'm looking over towards our farm now and our ewes are out there grazing you can see which is kind of nice but uh, when you wait as long as this and we waited this long not by choice because we definitely want it done because we've got a lot of sheep stuff we got to get to right now but um, the grass now has really really gone to head um, the alfalfa now I'm looking at this alfalfa and we might be lucky because I can still see flowers on it so if you can see the little purple flower there that's a good sign for the alfalfa anyway because uh, you want it to be in the flower stage when you cut it down but the grass is even as it lays here and, it, and it's just being cut down you can see it looks almost like straw it's very um, it's discolored it's not that bright green you see anymore and that's an indication that it's really really dried um, the grasses have been focusing on producing uh, seeds and um, it's not going to make ideal hay anymore because all the nutrients have gone left the stalks and gone into those heads and the roots and it's not in the leaves anymore so this hay is later luckily it does have the alfalfa mixed in with it and I'm thinking the alfalfa looks pretty good still so we're still gonna get decent hay off this and it will be dry hay as long as these clouds don't decide to do something nasty like rain um, but that's why you want to try get your hay off at the ideal time and people think haying is an easy thing you just go out cut it down and bale it up but timing is very very critical with haying more so than other crops maybe um, because if it's not done right um, yeah, uh, a whole season's feed can be ruined very quickly. You can see Ernie way, way back there. He's almost done now. In fact, I think that might have been his last row. Oh, he's going to be happy. He got a little tired of doing it for so long. And yeah, you want the first cut hay off ideally by July because you need to get that second cut because uh, most farmers really depend on the second cut because that's that's the really um, really good stuff and um, many farmers will even get a third cut but the later your first cut comes off the less and less chance you're gonna get third cut you will still get a second cut off but um, it pushes it back in the season because it's got to, once it's cut off like this, it's now got to depend on rain. And now we are into the dry months, July and August. So you can't depend on rain. And some years you won't get a second cut um, because you don't get enough rain. But um, you, you need it off early so you do have that time where if it does rain you can get your second and third cuts off so timing is yes critical with doing your hay just came to film how you were cutting the hay and we had a 
two week window of nice weather. I know, I've been filming it, honey. Yeah. So that's, that's disappearing. Yeah. But look, you can see the sheep from here. They're all heading in. Well, they're going to get in before the rain. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So now he's up at uh, another property we rent right off the highway. This is my absolute worst property. I kind of wish he didn't even have it because uh, getting into this field is really dangerous. The, the cars don't slow down. They're not expecting tractors. It's uh, just a nightmare property. But here he is bailing. I parked across the road because I'm afraid to come out of this field to try merge into the traffic. It's too hard, so I don't even know how he does it with a tractor. But he's got some round bales here. Um, the other field here is the one we gave uh, to Corey and his dad. So they took all that, that side off. And we're taking the top half. It's quite a hill on this property, so it's always fun when the bell comes rolling down the hill. I'm actually curious about this one because going when he goes uphill, the bells roll backwards and back down the hill. That's okay. But now he's coming down the hill. So if he pops a bale out of the tractor, does it roll back and hit the tractor? Hopefully not. <laughs> oh, and I see he turned out of, out of it. I'm guessing he might be thinking the same thing. That's what I thought. <laughs> he, he filled it up and then came over and popped it out at the top. So, so I can see this field would be a bit more of a pain in the neck for him having to go out every time, but I can see that if the bale rolled forward and hit the baler, that's a 600 to 800 pound bale and I'm sure that could do quite a bit of damage. See the constant traffic? They'll never let him in. It's a three-lane highway. Okay, so luckily it, he hasn't had another bale, so he's kind of at the bottom here. He can probably let it out there. It's a nice flat spot. lucky again the next one's on a little there's just a little level spot right there before it goes up the hill even more so that bale shouldn't shouldn't roll back down here either I'm seeing that the tractor is struggling up these hills too. 
going way slower. Because he's got to climb the hill and pull all that extra weight. Here she goes. <laughs> there she goes. Just got to go around the perimeter of this field now and that this will be done and that is all the fields he's going to bail for today and then tomorrow he has one more field to bail. how much the tractor actually struggles up those hills. I can see it's really, really straining. This one should go for a little bit of a roll. They could make a sport out of this. <laughs> and then you gotta come back here and put them all on wagons and bring them out. Um, and the, the problem is that he's gotta cross three lanes of uh, highway traffic and people, like I say, they don't expect farmers to be on the road and they come darting out and, and try to pass on places where they shouldn't be passing because they just don't want to slow down. And it's uh, actually someone um, in our area was out on the road with his telehandler and uh, uh, BMW uh, smashed into it and uh, one person died and the other person was in critical condition and uh, yeah it's a it's a mess but farmers have to travel field to field and um, yeah I guess people aren't aren't prepared for it they have no patience for it and when you hit farm equipment probably you're gonna be the one getting hurt because uh, that's heavy stuff but of course the farmers can be hurt too. Anyway, I'm gonna run across to my car and see if we can watch him leaving this property. Okay, he's on the road now. So this is normally, I'm on a side road. This is normally where we turn off with the car. But usually he goes um, past this road and I assume he still is because there's a turn lane up ahead. And what happened when he used to turn into this road is that people would try passing him and yeah, it was always almost an accident. There's the highway up there. He's turning off. He does have a turn lane there. 
and that's the only thing that saves us on that property that he does have that turn lane so he'll be coming along here we're right off of highway 15 which is what that road is and this road where this little car is coming and Arnie will be coming on this is the street we live on it's the sixth concession and I'll follow Arnie home now Here he is, heading home. That's it for his bailing today. He may go try pick up bales with his wagon tonight, but another day bailing tomorrow. One thousand sixteen bales for first cut. I think we'll be okay. How did you get onto the highway? Up the top. I know, but not bad. No, that's the best place. Yeah. You can see traffic coming on both sides. The people just can't slow down, eh? People don't realize that the little tractor is a putt putt machine. It's not an eighty kilometer an hour machine. So we were out going out to look at the rams and we stopped to look at our tomatoes. They got planted late, but they, are, they seem to be doing pretty good. Well, this is a different variety. I think it's the same variety. No, this is a different one. Is it? These two are the same. Oh, the two end ones? Okay. See, look, look at that. Yeah. Does Arnie have a green thumb? Arnie, I'm looking after, who's weeding them? Who's looking after you? Not you. Wait, show the pepper. You can tell we, we're not much on vegetable farming. <laughs> this, is, this is our meager, our meager attempt. But we got a pepper. We got a whole bunch of babies over here, see? And some babies. Look at the little babies, see? There they are. Okay, so we um, have some. See, he's swollen up. His, li his lips are kind of swollen, and usually, um, or it could get a swollen under the jaw. It's all here. And uh, when we look at his eyes, see how white that is? He's got worms. So we've treated him with Valbazine right now. And he's got so the rest of the uh, bottle jaw ram video got cut off somehow. So I'll let you know how that worked out tomorrow. As for now, we're going to call that a day. And hope you join us again next time for the next episode at Utopia Farms. This is a painting that was done by a local artist um, based on Silence of the Lambs. Anyway, bye for now.